Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at prying action. So prying action is actually in the manual part of the AISC. Uh, it's part nine. Um, there's a couple pages on it there. Um, and basically what it does is it checks the minimum thickness required to ignore the effects of prying action. And we'll talk about what, what those effects are in a second here. Um, but you can run this calculation for either a T-shape or an angle shape. Um, you can see there are the images on the right, how that looks uh, with the different uh, deflections and, and, and bending of the angle and the T-shape. And the one thing I want to point out here in these two images is the difference in calculating the value B. The equations between these two are, are fairly similar for calculating uh, the minimum thickness required, but the uh, the way that you calculate distance B is slightly different. In the T-shape, you go to the face of the uh, of the vertical leg, and the angle, you go to the center line of the vertical leg. And when we talk about prying action, right, this is what we're looking at. So when your applied force, right, causes uh, basically the, the shape to bend, and you get some, some bearing contact on the outer edge, which creates an additional force on your fastener. So if you were to consider the effects of prying action, you would have your applied force plus a prying action force on the bolt or fastener, uh, and that was, would be what you design uh, that bolt to take. Uh, CalcBook does not currently uh, uh, calculate this this applied uh, uh, prying action force, uh, but it is something that we are working on and will be implementing soon. So let's take a look at our problem statement for today. Uh, we're going to be considering an L three by three by one quarter angle with bolts uh, five eighths diameter spaced at six inches on center, and it's going to be one point five inches from the face of the vertical leg. So we'll have to keep that in mind that we're we're getting the distance from the face of the vertical leg. We have a tension load T of 2.5 kips on the bolt. And we're gonna determine if the thickness of the angle is sufficient to not consider prying action. And then we're gonna run the check again. Um, we're gonna do it for if we had a T-shape, uh, also with a quarter inch, quarter inch flange thickness. So let's open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So we go ahead and click into our steel design. We can select either the 16th edition or the 15th edition. The calculations are the same uh, for prying action. Go into our connection design module, and then we can go ahead and scroll down and select our angle prying action, and then also we're gonna select T uh, prying action because we're gonna do that one after. So go ahead and click confirm. So we're gonna start with our uh, prying action of an angle. Our thickness is gonna be a quarter of an inch. Um, we need to select the bolt location. So what this means is we need to, to tell the program whether or not we have sort of a typical layout with evenly spaced bolts, or if we have one edge condition uh, where the bolt is near an edge, and uh, or if it's got two edge conditions where there's a, an edge on either side uh, that would limit the, uh, the, the, the failure plane here that we have in the dashed line. Uh, so for us, we're just gonna go ahead and say that it's a typical condition. Our bolt hole, uh, we said we have 5 eighths bolts, so we're going to go ahead and assume a 16th over, 11 16th hole. And then we want to enter the distance from the bolt center line to the member leg. And so remember that for an angle, it's to the center line of the leg. So we need to add one half of a quarter inch and add that to our 1.5. So it's going to be 1.625 inches to the center of that, of that leg. And our bolt spacing is 6 inches and we're gonna leave our uh, bolt strength at 65 KSI. Our demand, um, it didn't say in the problem statement, but we're gonna go ahead and assume that it is already a uh, factored force. And we wanna make sure that we're entering the correct load, right? So for an angle, it's gonna be uh, just tension. And then when we get to the T, you'll see that we wanna make sure we're capturing the bolt force uh, versus the applied load. So for us, it's 2.5 kips, right? That's our single uh, force on this bolt here. And now we can get into the calculation. So if we look at our geometric parameters, the first thing we need to do is figure out what our tributary length is uh, based on the yield theory. So based on the uh, 1.75B from the center line of the hole, right, we already calculated that B distance. We can figure out what our tributary length is that we're going to assume uh, for this yielding uh, for this prying action uh, area. So it's gonna be the minimum of 3.5B or the spacing of the bolt. Now, if we had a edge condition or something like that, it would be limited potentially by the edge condition. So uh, if we were to toggle that on, this equation would look a little bit different. And then we need to calculate the B prime distance, which is just from the inside of the bolt hole to the stem face. So, uh, or in this case, to the, to the center line. Um, 
and then we can go ahead and calculate the, the prying action. Now, in the code, uh, the this equation is uh, set equal to the thickness required, uh, but because we are evaluating against the applied force, we've just rearranged this equation in CalcBook to solve for the applied force. So that's why you see a T squared in here uh, based on the thickness that the user has entered. So based on this, right, we have a maximum nominal force to ignore prying action of 4.51 kips, and then when you include the uh, LRFD strength reduction factor, that's a maximum force of 4.06 kips before we would have to consider prying action. And since our applied load is 2.5 kips, uh, we have a DC ratio of 0 0.62, so we do not need to consider prying action. Now, the second part of the problem statement asked us to take a look at the uh, T-shaped prying action. So let's go ahead and click onto that calculation. Um, we'll go ahead and enter the thickness of 0 0.25 inches. We'll select the same typical bolt layout, uh, the same bolt hole diameter. Um, and now for the uh, distance from the bolt center line to the member leg, uh, this is going to be to that inside face, right? So the inside face is going to be what the problem statement instead of 1.5 inches, our bolt spacing of 6 inches, and then our demand is going to be the same at 2.5 kips. Now, just something to note here, right? Um, this actually means that the total load applied is going to be two times that, so five kips. So we're we're doubling sort of the total applied load to the member, uh, but the bolt force is going to be the same. So uh, 2.5 kips on each bolt. So then we can start to go through our calculations, right? We calculate our tributary length, which is a little bit shorter because we have a smaller B. And then same thing with our B prime is a little bit shorter. So that actually increases the prying action capacity because we have a shorter uh, moment arm for that bending. So we have a slightly lower DCR of 0 0.6, um, but we do not need to consider prying action for this loading condition. So that is uh, prying action in CalcBook. We hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we are offering a 25% discount on your first month's subscription, subscription of CalcBook. Uh, you can use the promo code YTCB2024. Um, and you go ahead and use that on our website. Go ahead and download the program, get a two-week free trial, um, and then you can enter that code in from there if you want to receive that discount. So hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.